This is part two of repairing a Harbor Freight heat gun. So I'm assuming you've already watched part one where I showed you how to unplug the heat gun from the wall, disassemble it, check for continuity on your power plug, check for continuity on your power switch, then check for continuity on your uh, thermal fuse. So if you have continuity on all three of those things or you have fixed them so that you have continuity now, but you're still not able to get your uh, heat gun to work, say your blower motor is not working, which is exactly what happened to me, this video is going to resume with what I had to do for my little circuit board where the diodes are mounted, how I took that off of the motor, then I checked the motor to make sure that the motor worked, and it did. So then I knew the problem had to be on that circuit board. And that's where this video is going to resume. So one of the things I did before I took the little green circuit board off of the motor was I cleaned it up real good with alcohol so I could read the lettering on the diodes and I uh, made this diagram and you can see on the left and the right I've got the motor posts that's the posts that comes up into the green circuit board for them from the motor and you can see down in the far left hand side I've got a positive sign and I say uh, blue wire from heating element to this connector and then the other connector, I have black wire from switch to connector. And then up in the right-hand corner, you see it. I have M7 diode orientation. So I took the new M7 diodes that I bought, and I uh, tested them with my meter it set up for testing diodes. And if I put the positive probe near the 7, or with that positive sign, and I put the negative probe over where the three lines are, I would read 0 0.54 volts. But if I switched the probes around so that the positive probe was where the three little lines are, or the negative side, and the negative probe was over by the 7, or on the positive side, then I read OL. And that's what a diode is supposed to do. It's only supposed to allow current to flow in one direction. So the proper orientation of these diodes is very important. One way they're going to allow current to flow through them, and the other way they're not going to allow current to flow through them. So they have to be properly oriented on this circuit board in order for it to work. So this diagram came in very handy for me. I took the motor off. I took this, uh, this little circuit board off, which has those M7F diodes on it. And, and now I'm going to uh, hook this motor up to a DC power source so that I can see if the motor is still good or not. If the motor turns, and you see those uh, impellers down there, if they turn, then I know the motor's good. And most likely the problem is with that uh, little small green circuit board I took off. So I'm gonna turn it on now just to show you that it works. Using my right hand. Okay, I just turned it on. And you can see that the propellers are definitely turning. And this thing over here, I've got it set on 3.7 volts and it's drawing 0.19 amps. But the motor is working with a DC voltage source. So I think I found the problem with this uh, circuit board off of my uh, heat gun. If I put, uh, if I test for continuity, from this post right here, you can see that I have continuity from here to here. And if I just lock in my uh, probe in that hole, I have continuity over here 
So you can see that lighter colored green comes over here. And then you can see that the epoxy, the green color epoxy is coming off and a copper lead right there. So if I have my probe here in that hole and the other probe over here, I have continuity to this point. But I do not have continuity right here. You can see that the piece of copper is missing from right there over to here. It's missing. So what I'm going to try to do, I've cut a little piece of copper wire here. I'm going to try to tin that piece of copper wire. And then I'm going to try to put it on, try to solder it on right here. And then I'm going to bend it and bring it over and solder it on here. And then I'm hoping that I can cover it with some uh, epoxy because it goes right underneath. It goes right underneath a diode that goes from this post to this post. I don't know why they didn't run it. I guess they just didn't have enough room to run it over here on the side. So they ran it underneath that diode. Uh, so whatever I put there underneath that diode has got to be non-conductive. I'm going to stop the video now. I forgot to take some video after I put the uh, wire on there, the jumper wire that's going to serve as a trace. But I did some continuity tests and it was working great. Uh, then I went ahead and I put brand new M7 diodes. Well, first I should say, after I put the, the wire, the trace wire, then I put this stuff here, liquid tape. Uh, I put it on the end of a cleaning swab. So this is the end over here that we would clean. I've been using alcohol to clean off my flux. But over here on this end, that liquid tape is black. So I just opened the lid enough to put this down in there, get a little bit of uh, liquid tape on it. And then I used it to cover. And that's what that blackness is that you see there. So that solder that you see right there, there was a copper trace right there and I soldered the wire onto that copper trace. And then I took it underneath what would be underneath this diode and over, and then soldered it again over here. And then I let it continue over to this terminal here, which is where that is supposed to go to. And uh, I soldered it again right here at the end of that terminal. So I covered each pad, you can see right here, there's going to be a, a diode that goes right here. And you can see that black liquid tape that I put right there. And also there's going to be a, a diode that goes right here. And you can see the liquid tape I put there. So I did the same thing over here. I put liquid tape across that wire, that new wire trace. And I covered it all the way over to here. And then I put liquid tape underneath, just like I did here, underneath this diode. And of course, because I put liquid tape on that new trace, that new wire trace, it's the same thing as putting a liquid tape here. But just imagine a dot underneath that diode there. Anyway, uh, that's how I've been proceeding and trying to fix that broken trace. And it seems like it's working. Uh, because when I hook my, uh, when I hook my positive end of my, uh, this red lead up to this, and then I come over here and I check right here, I'm getting continuity. 
And then when I put it on tests for diode, because that trace is supposed to go from here, underneath there, not make contact with that diode, but over to this contact point right here. So if I have this on positive, and then I put my negative probe over here with a testing diode, I get 0.545 or something like that, which is exactly what I get if I test the diode from this end to this end. So it looks like to me that trace is working because it's carrying over to here, underneath there, not making contact with it, over to this end, and then when I put the diode on there, it, it's working. In fact, from there, it's supposed to come back to this post, and whenever I put it, my negative probe over here, I also get 0.54. So it seems to be working great. Uh, I guess the real test will be after I get it all put together and put it back on and put AC current to it. I'm going to stop the video now. So I finally have this heat gun completely back together. And uh, I have it on high heat right now, but I haven't turned on the power switch yet. I'm going to turn it on right now. And as you can see, it is running. And you can see it's starting to get hot down there. It's very hot already. Oh, I'm going to flip it over to low. That's off. And there's low. Uh, you can see there's still the heating element is still very hot. So one last thing on this. They recommend that if you've been running it on high heat, that you flip it over to low heat, low to low heat, and uh, put it on its top like this, uh, away from anything flammable, and just let it run on low heat for a little while to let it cool down a little bit before you completely turn it off. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off now. Okay, so it's off. Go ahead and turn this off. And uh, hopefully that thermal fuse doesn't blow again. That's one thing I didn't do. We had been running it on high heat to try to separate a uh, ball joint stud from a steering knuckle. Uh, we just, we had banged on it with a hammer and it wouldn't come undone. So then we decided to use the heat gun and that did do the trick. We got the, the stud heated up and uh, then hit it with a hammer and it did separate. But we had run it on high for a while and then we just turned it off. And I think that's why my thermal fuse ended up blowing. I should have uh, stood it up like this and let it run on low heat for a while to kind of let it cool down a little bit before turning it completely off. Anyway, it's fixed. Uh, it's the end of this video.